AMD's next generation Ryzen CPUs on the desktop were a huge hit. And they're finally here in the laptop. But can they live up to the hype? Let's find out. So yes, Ryzen is finally here in its laptop form. I have right here with me the Ryzen 5 2500U that is at the moment the lower tier model. The other one is the Ryzen 7 2700U which has an extra 0.2 gigahertz and extra two Vega compute units. Uh, this is the only one available at the moment in the HP Envy X360 which is the only laptop available at the moment with Ryzen. Which is fine with me, I love the HP Envy X360. You guys can see my slew of videos I made on the 2016 models up here including benchmarks for the FX9800P, that's the 7th gen Bristol Ridge ship powered by the Bulldozer architecture that preceded this one in the 2016 model. So yes, I have soon coming a full review of this laptop where I compare it to the 2016 model, so make sure you stay subscribed for that. But for now, this is just the benchmarks of the chip itself. So I'll be comparing the Ryzen 5 2500U to the FX9800P. Unfortunately, I don't have any competing Intel chips, either 7th gen dual cores or 8th gen quad cores to compare with, so this will be an all AMD roundup. Now, starting with CPU specific benchmarks, I have Cinebench where the 9800P scored a 220, which is, it's, it's pretty weak, yeah, it's, it's pretty weak. Now, the 2500U here scored a 605, so that's about triple the performance in this one test though. Now, CPU-Z was the second test, and I did the single-threaded and multi-threaded version. So single-threaded 9800P got a 188, the 2500U 389. So that's closer to about double, maybe a little bit higher than double the performance single-threaded only. Multi-threaded, however, we got 606 on the FX version and 1815 with Ryzen. There we go, back to triple the performance in multi-threaded tasks. I then threw in a real-world example with an Adobe Premiere Pro export at 1080p. The specific video, you guys can go check it out. It's the personal rig update number three, where I put the desktop version of Ryzen into this machine right here. So definitely go check that out. But I chose that one because it's got a good mix of effects, got Lumetri color, warp stabilizer, time lapse, and it really leverages both the CPU and the GPU. In fact, I noticed especially on the Ryzen version, the CPU and GPU maxed out interchangeably. So it started off with GPU being maxed out and CPU between 20 and 50, and then it just swapped out to GPU being next to nothing, but CPU being pinned to the top. So I think I made the right choice choosing that video for my export test. But enough of that, the numbers. The FX variant got an hour and 46 minutes, while the Ryzen version took only 37 minutes. That's about three times less. So this three times more multi-threaded performance actually does translate into real world applications. Now, a little bit more on editing. I did use the FX9800P to edit all my videos for CES 2017 and a good number of other side projects for school and whatnot. All my CES videos, I could comfortably edit them, but exports took about an hour each. Yikes. Now with this new Ryzen version, for CES 2018, I should be able to breeze through them no problem. A plus. Now that's enough CPU tests, now some GPU tests. So this version has the Vega 8 GPU with 8 compute units. So my first test was Unigen Heaven, a synthetic test. So in terms of frame rates, the 9800P got a minimum of 5 frames, where the Ryzen upped it by 2 with 7 frames. Ooh, big difference. But the average is where it really shows the difference. 7.7 .7 frames per second average on the FX version, where Ryzen 5 brings it up to 21.1. Yeah, again, triple the performance in GPU as well. The score is 195 on the 9800P and 531 on the 2500U for those of you who are interested. Now some games. This is obviously not an intense gaming laptop and these chips are not meant to be intense gamers. If you want that, you need a dedicated NVIDIA GPU or maybe that new Intel AMD hybrid thing that's coming out, which we don't know much about yet. So I tested three games at 1080p, medium to medium low settings, and at CSGO, Minecraft, and League of Legends. 
So I tested them at the settings that I normally played at on the 9800P when I was at LAN parties and whatnot. And those are uh, settings that I could comfortably play at for the majority of the time. CSGO, we got a minimum of 17 and 57 frames on each CPU, which, wow, already that is a huge improvement in terms of minimum. Yeah, the 9800P in medium, medium low settings stuttered a bit, but it was overall playable. Ryzen, I would have no problem kicking it up a notch to medium, medium high. It would still be easily playable. Average frame rates were 30 and 80 respectively, which again, the 30, it was more of a playable, not a great, just playable. Whereas with Ryzen, I'd be comfortable kicking it up a notch and still being very comfortable. Minecraft now, a less intensive game, got 14 minimum on the 9800P and 72 average. Whereas on Ryzen, it got 87 minimum and 174 average. Wow, I would, could probably put this on max settings and still play comfortably. League of Legends was my last gaming test that I did, again, 1080p, medium, medium low settings. The 9800p got 46 minimum and a 57 average, and the Ryzen model got 74 minimum with a 94 average. So, final verdict here. CPU side, it's triple the performance in multi-threaded applications, and it is great. I should be able to breeze through CES 2018. In terms of GPU, I can kick the settings up from what I usually played at on my old laptop and still be comfortable playing. And hey, maybe I can play a few more intensive games on it as well. Now, a friend of mine, Remix Reviews, go check him out on YouTube and Twitter. He also got this laptop and he did a lot of testing in slightly more intensive games like Overwatch. And he said for games like that, 720p medium to high settings is what he would recommend. But for all the games that I play personally, 1080p medium low is what I was comfortable putting these at. All in all, I'm not really surprised by this performance. AMD did say about triple CPU and double the triple the GPU performance, and that's what I expected. I was a little confused when I saw some of their game benchmarks because I kind of assumed they were on the same level as the games I tested. They're like, hey, wait, I can get those numbers with the FX. But now that I've actually gotten this in hands-on and I've been able to test it in person, I see the improvement is incredible. Again, full review of this laptop is coming soon. So far, it's better in every way, but any details and quirks I will address in that review video. So definitely stay subscribed for that. And that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, leave a like and leave a comment down below telling me if you plan on picking up this laptop or any other Ryzen Mobile laptops. Tell me what you think. Let's start a discussion in the comments below about Ryzen Mobile. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Solid State Tweet. You can be the first to get the updates. I said exactly when I ordered the laptop, when I had the delays, a few numbers were teased. If you want to be the first to have all the information, definitely go follow me on Twitter there. And that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.